and welcome to The Chef's Kitchen. I'm your host, Adriana Rizuela, and we're here at the PBS 39 Studios at the Steel Stacks campus in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Today in the kitchen, we have Chef Chip Roman of the Roman Restaurant Group. Welcome, Chef. Thank you. And helping us in the kitchen today is Chef Yanni Arantoulis, um, who is the chef de cuisine at Micah in Philadelphia. So thank you both for being here today. Thanks for, Thanks having, for having us. Us. Great. So what are you going to have us making? So today we're going to make a uh, big-eye tuna crudo with a smoked jalapeno dashi and some uh, spring vegetables. Great, sounds really fresh and delicious. So we're gonna probably you know, do this together. Okay. Um, Yanni, do you wanna start with the uh, kombu? Yeah, so we'll, um, we're gonna start with the dashi. Um, dashi is an Asian broth. It's uh, typically made of um, kombu, which is dried kelp, um, lots of MSG, and then bonito flakes, which is dried bonito. And we like to use a little bit of uh, dried shiitake as well. So we have some warm water over here. Okay. Are you going to be reconstituting some of these um, in so the water? So we're going to, it's essentially like an infusion. Okay. So we uh, we'll bring our water up and then we will um, we'll add all the ingredients. Okay. We'll add the, uh, the shiitake and the kombu first and mm -hmm. then about 15 minutes after steeping then we'll add the bonito just because, just to kind of control flavor profiles. This stuff's really, really strong. Um, so while that water's boiling, we're going to actually start with the, uh, the smoked jalapeno. So we, um, we like preserving. We don't necessarily just use it for as a preservation aspect, but also for flavor profiles and what it yields. Um, we're going to start off with the jalapenos. So we have a smoker going. We like to use apple chips. So that's what lots this of is smoke. here. Yep, lots yes, of smoke. Exactly. I can see it coming out already. I hope the alarm doesn't go off. I'm very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so, All right, so a little makeshift smoker. Exactly. So the smoker's up. You guys can kind of see. There's oh, lots wow. of smoke. How long will it take for that to smoke? So we tend to smoke these for about three hours. So okay. oh, for wow. a pretty long, long period of yeah. time. And we what won't that does, do it, it, actually, no. uh, <laughs> okay. it actually cooks them as well. So the peppers are in the smoker. Now we're going to start the pickling liquid, which is the second aspect. Um, we will take white balsamic vinegar, that in our pot, sugar, and then water. So um, it's pretty standard. Uh, pickling liquid. It's just white balsamic water and sugar. Um, you can kind of, it's great for vegetables. It keeps things nice and bright. You have the sweetness from the white balsamic and then mm -hmm. we'll, um, we're actually just going to use a little bit of bay leaf. So fresh bay leaf or using dry bay uh, leaf? We use fresh and then just a little bit of thyme as well. All right. So we'll let that come up all. to a simmer. All right. So you're the uh, chef de cuisine at Micah, but you have a bunch of other different restaurants in Philadelphia. Is that right, Chef? Yes, we started with uh, Blackfish. And now we have uh, the Tremont, which we just opened on 15th and Locust. We have Ella on 3rd and Bainbridge. And then we have Micah in Chestnut Hill. And we also have a, uh, two restaurants in Costa Rica. Really? Costa Coast. Rica? Mm -hmm. That must have been fun to That's open where my tan down comes there. From. Okay. <laughs> yeah. This uh, tuna is actually from the Pacific Coast as well. Okay. So it's a big eye tuna. That's what we're going to use today. Great. It's beautiful. It, it's a center cut. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll start cutting that now. We use lots of fish at all the restaurants. Um, everyone, you know, each chef de cuisine, like Yanni, takes their own approach. Um, so on the tuna, you have, the, you know, like a sinew. They call it the chain. Okay, right. So we're going to kind of cut that down. That is a big piece of tuna. Yeah, and then you kind of just curve your knife and takes it, you know, usually one or two swipes. Like that. And then this chain part right here, it's great for making, like, tuna salad. You can cook it in oil, cook it well done. So. You can just kind of slice off the sinew part. Mm -hmm. And then if you cook that, you know, we cook it in, you know, you can cook it in olive oil with some fresh herbs. Mm -hmm. You'll break down all the, you know, the sinew. And you can chop it up for, you know, tuna salad on a Sunday morning. Okay. The skin, I have not found any use for. I'm sure Yanni's got several uses, but. Do you have a little trick for the tuna skin or not so much? Skin, still working on it. Still coming up with an it's answer good for bait. that. It's good right. bait if you want to go fishing. Sounds good. Totally sustainable. So then there's two parts of it, of the tuna loin. Mm -hmm. There's the, you know, you, I kind of split it in half right where that sinew line is. Right. And we're going to do a crudo today, so we want to, you know, we don't want to have any sinew because, you know, we'll cook this part rare and we'll use this part raw. Okay. So I'll just put this back in the refrigerator real quick. Great. And so it. crudo being that it's going to be served raw. It's going to be served raw. Mm -hmm. And where do you get your fish from? We get our fish from all over. We use a, a company out of uh, Honolulu. We use Samuels and Sun Seafood. Oh, wow. We use. Pure, where, who else do we use? I forget. Peerless. So Peerless. Peerless. River and Glen. They're sustainable. River and Glen. Um, Sourcing from all over, getting yeah, the freshest we, exactly. ingredients. Absolutely. So then we're just going to cut it down, and we're just going to do a small dice. Uh, tuna is probably the simplest ingredient we're going to use today. It's just all about the preparation. So you're a fisherman? Big fisherman. Yeah, so do you ever catch any of the fish that you're going to be cooking? I wish. Like you wish. It's not legal. Oh, okay. 
Just just for yourself at home. Just for myself That's at home. That's right. <laughs> okay. Stay tuned for more with Chef Chip Roman. We're back with Chef Chip Roman of the Tremont. So our water's just about up. We're um, we'll first to add our kombu. Okay, and remind me what kombu is again. So it's, it's dried um, kelp. kelp. It's actual seaweed, correct. Okay. And it's, um, the reason um, people enjoy it so much, it has this natural ability to kind of, it, it's, it's full of MSG. Um, so MSG is monosodium glutamate. Mm -hmm. and, um, it's that umami flavor. Right. Um, things that you can find in meat. So this is actually found in seaweed. So did you dry this or did you get it this we way? We purchased it dried okay. like that, yeah. Um, kelp's kind of difficult to find around here, but mm -hmm. um, if you go to Asia and stuff like that, a lot of restaurants, you know, are harvesting it right. and drying it themselves. This okay. is actually sourced. So we have that in the liquid. We're going to put some of the Now we're going to put some shiitake. of the dried shiitakes. Okay. When it's actually all finished and done, we'll actually season it with white soy. Okay. So salt has a tendency to almost like cloud it. Um, mm -hmm. White soy kind of gives it a whole nother flavor profile. Right. Um, gives it a nice tint to it, and that'll be our seasoning. So we'll use white soy for that. So is this cruder that we're making today, is that something that would be on the menu at Blackfish or any of your other restaurants? Yes, this is a t very typical dish of what we would do. We change the menus a lot. Okay. Uh, we probably change them too much. Too much. But that's great because you're keeping all the fresh ingredients, keeping everything seasonal. The customers have to love that. Sure. And it's, you know, like I said, it's a, it's a, when I first had Blackfish, I did a lot more of, you know, a lot of the menus, but now it's, I rely on a team. Right. So guys like Yanni. So yeah, so a lot of the dishes we do now, are, it's, it's all like a big collaboration. Mm-hmm. So nice I, team effort. Yeah, it's just, it's impossible to do everything <laughs> myself. So our pickling liquid is just about up. Um, jalapenos have been smoking, so what we're going to do is we're just slowly just kind of take them out. So you'll see they'll start to get this tint to them. Um, after we pull them out, we'll just put them in some sort of vessel, something that just to contain the liquid. We want to make sure that they're completely submerged okay. when we uh, pour the liquid over. So we, uh, I'm just going to leave the thyme and bay leaf, not even strain it out. Um, just kind of helps with the infusion. So after we actually pour this liquid over, we're going to let these sit. Um, we'll be good in probably about an hour, hour and a half. We like to go a little bit longer. The longer the better, to be perfectly honest. Okay. Um, the peppers themselves are great. The broth or the liquid, the pickling liquid, is actually what we really enjoy. Okay. Um, people think jalapeno, they think heat, they think spicy. Right, um, they think it's a hot pepper If you've noticed, right we away. haven't really punctured the pepper or mm -hmm. ruptured it. Um, the seeds are actually what contain capsaicin, which so makes it be spicy. A little more mild. Exactly, so there's no heat to it whatsoever. Um, so you kind of get this nice barbecue, smoky flavor from the peppers, which actually infuse the liquid. Nice compliment. Exactly. So our dashi has been sitting just for about 20, 25 minutes. Now we're gonna add our bonito. Okay, and this is tuna. This is tuna. Not so how you're tip, not like that no, tuna. No, not at all. A little so, bit different. So this has been dried. Okay, smoked and then dried, and then okay. it's shaved super fine. Um, so then after we're gonna steep that. So that'll probably steep for about two or three more minutes, and then we'll come over here. We're gonna actually start um, some knife cuts with uh, the garnish for the crudo dish. So we have. Can carrots. I cure the carrots? Yeah, absolutely. Can I do that? All right. So we have uh, some carrots. These are just some local carrots that we get, and we're actually gonna cure them. So kind of going along with preservation, we're just going to, uh, we're gonna use salt. sugar, salt, oh, sure. and coriander. So coriander goes really well with carrot. Um, and actually kind of plays off the garnish, which we're gonna do a little bit later, which is uh, cilantro. So And so how long will this need to sit in the mix of salt and um, So we go for coriander. about, it all depends on the size of the carrot. Um, if you go too long, they tend to get a little bit salty. Um, we go, for a carrot like this, we'll probably go for about two hours. Okay. And what it does is you'll see as it sits, it starts to draw out all the moisture from the carrot. So That's really interesting. To yeah, I've seen like, cured salt cured fish and things like that but not so much vegetables absolutely definitely yeah. so, a little bit different yeah so you get this nice little crunch it almost softens the carrot as well so we can still kind of keep it raw mm -hmm. um, and just texturally it kind of denatures it which is just cool we like it so this will be the garnish for the fish itself yeah, just to make it interesting yeah it sounds very interesting it's hard to find new ingredients so we have to find new ways so you to just kinda... make them up yourself we're trying <laughs> so um, your newest restaurant is the Tremont the Tremont we just opened in the uh, Aria building on our 15th and Locust great. on April 15th, so it's going great so far. Nice, and what kind of um, food do we find there? So we're making it, uh, you know, it's, it's small plates. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a combination of all the styles that we've done so far. I'd okay. say it's probably a combination of Ella and Micah the most. Great. You know, it's still re very refined, but it's a relaxed atmosphere. Mm -hmm. I'll never compete with my baby blackfish. No, you're gonna so let that one be. I'm gonna let that one be as it is. Great. Um, yeah, we're open seven nights a week, I oh, mean wow. a full bar. Lots of great stuff there. It's going to be the same thing, similar tastings. And um, what building is the Tremont? The Aria building. And that's in Center City, Philadelphia? That's in Center City on 15th and Locust. Great. 
Great. So our dashi's been steeping. So now we're going to strain it. All the uh, the kombu, the bonito, the um, dried shiitake. So now we just get this really nice, flavorful broth. And you can see what we did here. We we don't we typically use a chinois. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have a chinois at home, you can just take like a napkin like we did. Right. Not a new one. We put it in a colander. That we don't and worry that, about it, anything. And it gets clear like tea. So it's super clear. It's really nice. The aroma's really good. Um, it has that almost like a natural smokiness. Not natural, but a smokiness from the other bonito that we steamed in as well. We'll be right back with more from the Chef's Kitchen. We're back with Chef Chip Roman of the Tremont. So then we have the pickled jalapenos, right? Yep, so we have pickled jalapenos. This is our dashi. Mm -hmm. So we're going to let this cool down. You're going to let the dashi cool down? Yeah, you will let the dashi cool down. And this is our finished product here. That's what that would be. All right. So how long would this? Are you just bringing it to room temperature, or are you I chilling it? I let it come it? down to room temperature. Okay. Um, here for the for the sake of time on TV here. Thanks, Yanni. Mm -hmm. So this is called white soy. It's got the Doesn't same. Doesn't look white. Well, you've seen dark soy, right? Yeah. So this is kind of. <laughs> it's a little bit lighter. This is, yeah, it's light, but they call it white soy. Okay. Um, and then this is our dashi. Mm -hmm. So we're, instead of using salt, we're going to use the soy. Okay. So to kind of stick with the uh, you know the Asian profile. Great. Um, just a couple teaspoons. A little bit goes a long way. All right. So these are very familiar ingredients. Yes. Um, that both everyone's delicious. had. Again, just trying to use a new way. So what is it we're going to be doing with this now? So we're going to make essentially you know the sauce mm -hmm. or you know a vinaigrette. Would, would you call it a vinaigrette, Yanni? Or a vinaigrette or a broth? What you yeah. Call it? We um, finish this. We like kind of like the put a decent amount of broth mm -hmm. in. Um, we also serve it with a spoon um, after you kind of eat your fish and all the ingredients that's in it. It's really nice to just kind of one cleanse your palate and just kind of keep it going a little longer. Mm -hmm. And this has the sweet, the sour, the smoky, right. the salty. I'm try so the taste combined that. flavors. So will you do anything? Will you eat the pepper at all or is it more just for the infusion of the flavor? For this portion, it's the, it's the, uh, it's, it's the flavor. But like we were saying before, you can take this and you know make a paste. You can do yeah. it with cheese. You can do it with you, you can know, really taste halibut. the uh, tuna in that that was infused into it. It's yeah. got that yeah, really Benita mild. Flake. It's like in the back a little bit, but it's really nice. Yeah, well, bonita you know is in the tuna family mm -hmm. too. So, so this is you know very basic. We want to put some acid in the sugar and the salt, and that's what all this pickling liquid contains. That's right. So that those Asian dishes they have a nice balance of all those different flavors. So that's exactly what this is. Great. Okay, and then now the garnishes. So we're going to do some English cucumber, it's just a seedless okay, cucumber. Seedless cucumber, that's right. And we also have, these are our, our cured carrots. You can oh, kind so of these are the cured ones. So these are ones that we cured yesterday. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of see they're, you know. In the coriander, sugar, salt. Correct. Okay. And then we rinse them off. So you can kind of see how now, you know, the salt's drawing out the moisture. That's right, yeah, and you the can sugar. see it. It's kind of like if you ever sprinkled uh, sugar on a strawberry, the juice comes out. Mm -hmm. The same deal, you're just not going to get as much juice here. Okay. So I'm sure me and Yanni are probably have two different ideas how we're going to do this. <laughs> but since it's in my hand, we'll do it this way. We're just going to, you know, shave thin ribbons. I don't know. Is that how you would do it, Yanni? It's not how you would do it. <laughs> <laughs> how would you do it? I'd probably dice it. Okay. Yeah. So we're not going to dice it just to just to spite him right now. <laughs> all right. So we're just um, going to keep peeling it all the way through. I'm going to peel it all the way down. Then you can see how the seeds kind of start. They call mm -hmm. these seedless as well. There's some right. little micro little bit. seeds. Mm -hmm. Yanni, you want to talk about the mustard oil yeah, and I'll get the tuna? Talk yeah, more about so that. We, um, so, again, it's all about layering flavors, seasoning properly. We'll have this beautiful product, the fish itself, and mm -hmm. we'll dress it. Right. Um, we'll start with just a touch of mustard oil. It's actually just pressed mustard plant. You can, I would taste it, but maybe like half a drop, okay? It's extremely flavorful. Okay. Um, and it's almost like, I would think like, Probably horseradish, something along oh, those wow. lines. It has that spice Don't taste to it. Too much. Yeah, not I tried too it much. just a little bit. I thought it was delicious. Yeah. <laughs> so if you like I mustard, mustard, you're really so there. You go. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It was good. And then this is uh, just lemon oil. So just olive oil that's been infused with lemon. So we're actually instead of just using straight olive oil, mm -hmm. we'll use both of these. Um, okay. So again, just kind of building. So you're really flavor. layering Lots of flavors. those yeah. flavors, yeah. Yeah. making it really complicated for us to guess what's in. Sure. And in this the is all very healthy. You, you know, your nose. We're using pretty much zero fat. You know, a little bit of olive oil. Right. The mustard oil, but so it's very nice things light very dish. very light. You know, we find people really want to eat light these days. Yeah. Well, it's great for the season. I mean, we got spring. We've got warmer temperatures on the way. So. Correct. And the tuna is very great. fatty as well. Mm-hmm. Um, this time of year, when the water's still cold, they have a lot of fat. Right. Once the water warms up, you know, the tuna will kind of, I don't think shed, but you know, they <laughs> lean up a little bit. Correct. So You're the fisherman. I'll take your word for it. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'll say anything then. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like a lot of ingredients for this one dish, but all of them all these relate things to each tasting. other and they I'm, all go very yeah. well with each other. I'm very um, excited to try all these different components layered together in one bite. 
So it's it's not necessarily you know mustard. Okay, well mustard will be a whole another flavor profile, but the mustard goes you know it's just it's a very small amount. So like we said before, it's just building layers, mm -hmm. things that kind of go well with each other, um, and just you know produce depth in a dish as right. opposed to just having it be very one. So what are what did you put in the tuna, or what are we? So now I'm going to put the mustard oil. Okay. And just a little bit. That's really good. I need to find the some mustard of that. oil. Yeah. yeah. Do you make that or? You can make it. We buy it. Okay. And then this is just the lemon oil. And we're going to put a touch of salt on this. A little bit of salt? Yeah, I'll just use my hands, excuse me. Remember, we have a lot of soy in here. That's right. So your salt's Don't kind need of, too much salt. Your salt's kind of taken care of. And then we mix it up. So with the olive oil being infused with lemon, do you have to work, like sometimes when you put fish in um, with the acid, it kind of cooks exactly, a little bit? So that's exactly why we do this. We want it okay. to retain this nice bright color. Mm -hmm. If we were to put, you know, if we were in Costa Rica, I would use that and do like a ceviche. Okay. When you eat, you know, you eat with your eyes, people love that visual look. That's right. So a little trick you can do is if you go to, uh, you know, online, they, they actually sell lemon, like straight lemon oil now. Mm -hmm. And for about a teaspoon of the lemon oil, you can buy to about a gallon of olive oil. Oh, wow. You know, it's a great way to do it. Um, and you can also put lemon peels to freshen it up. Okay, good tip. Yeah. yeah. Stay tuned for more with Chef Chip Roman. We're back with more from the Chef's Kitchen. So now to plate, that'll probably be another... Uh, Another differing of opinions? Yeah, How it's okay. They both work. Different artistic eyes? There's <laughs> too many chefs in the kitchen. <laughs> All right. So we're, we're, we'll go with your approach. What are you going to yeah, do here? Let's go with my approach, yeah. <laughs> um, so we're going to take, you know, a little bit of the tuna. All right. Um, if we're going to do this at home, we're not going to use a, uh, you know, a, a ring mold. We would use a ring mold at the restaurant. So we're just going to kind of put a layer in here. All right, so you said in the restaurant you would use a ring mold. I would use a ring mold. And you always, you definitely want to serve this in a bowl mm -hmm. just because of the broth. Okay. And it's going to act as a sauce. We would do it table side, you know, at Micah. Oh, okay. Um, so you would bring the broth over. You wouldn't Correct. So the broth, you know, way. you could put it, you know, just look at what we have in front of us. You could use that olive oil mm -hmm. container and put the broth in there and then just pour it in. Okay. And it kind of gives you like a nice presentation. Oh, wow. That's very nice. Um, so let's, you want to dress the vegetables, Yanni? Sure. So here's your tuna. Okay. Here's our broth. So yeah, we're just going to dress it with the, you know. So you're putting a little more elements. of the lemon infused just oil. Just a touch of lemon these. oil, okay. exactly. Um, a little bit of salt. And then also just a touch of olive oil. So again, like Chip said before, you can kind of, you know, use that lemon oil to also cut it and flavor olive oil with it. So right. we don't want it to be too upfront. So okay. we're just going to gently use And what oil. do we have here? Just a little bit. So this is uh, cilantro. Just baby cilantro. Oh, baby cilantro. I was going to say, it doesn't look exactly like cilantro. You want to taste it? It's just when they when they coriander seeds sprout, this is what comes out. So this is it's like, very popular this now. This is like the teenage cilantro. Correct, but it's a, it's a lot more mild. So people that don't like cilantro, they mm -hmm. might like this. It's a little... Oh, yeah. It's still got that really fresh taste. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess I'll put the vegetables on, Piece huh? the vegetables on for us. So we just kind of inlay them, and you just want to be careful. You know, you don't want to cover anything up. So you still want to see every component of the dish, mm -hmm. but not necessarily cover the tuna, because that's what we're trying to showcase. So then we're just going to kind of, again, at the restaurant, you know, we would do it table side. Right. And we would give you like a whole entourage, but, so we're just going to pour that on. Looks almost too pretty to eat. Hmm. Thank you. So how much are you putting in there? Just enough to like? I like to have it come like halfway up. Okay. Um, you want to have a lot of, I love sauce, so you want to have a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Typically people won't eat all of it. Some will, but you know, typically not. Right. All right. So a little of the cilantro. The baby. Mm -hmm. So that kind of, you know, plays into the, the coriander cured carrot. Mm -hmm. And then we'll just drop it with some of the mustard oil. Drop some of the mustard oil Just a couple top. drops, just to kind of give that like, you know, just a little, little bit kick. Of, a little kick. Great. A little bit of Malden sea salt. So this so is a little um, finishing salt. Exactly. So just, just a little crunch, a little texture. Yeah. Florida cell is another good one. Mm -hmm. We tend to like Malden just because of uh, how it's flaked. It's not okay. as dense. Um, if you really, if you find a whole piece of Malden, it's actually pretty cool because it looks like little, like perfect little pyramids. Oh wow! Um, so we can kind of incorporate those too. Okay, great. So we yeah. finished it with a little bit of salt. Yeah. So shall we try it? Yeah. Well, I'm gonna bring it over to okay. the tasting. Okay. All right, we're ready to taste mm. this beautiful dish that you both prepared. So everyone, get a fork or a spoon. I guess I'll the take spoon, a spoon you want to like get. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm copying. Yanni you. doesn't get any. Did you want a spoon? Oh, that'd be great. There's a spoon right here. Perfect. You go for it. We all have to enjoy this. Ladies first. Okay. 
I'll go in first, get some of this tuna. Mmm. Wow. So fresh. I love the complexity of the, um, the sauce, the dashi that we made, infused with the um, smoked pickled jalapeno. It's just really complex, but so light at the same time. Yeah, it's not spicy. Mm-hmm. I love it. And I think the cuts of the vegetables are perfect for the, the size of the tuna. Thank you. It pairs really, really nicely. Good job, Yanni and Chip. <laughs> yeah. You both did great. Um, but thank you so much. So Chef uh, Chip Roman and Yanni, thank you so much for coming thank to the you. Chef's it Kitchen. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank Beautiful you. work. Thank you so much. Thank Hope so to see much. you again soon. Thank you too. Thanks. For the viewer who is passionate about food and wine, the Chef's Kitchen provides tips and techniques from the country's most exclusive restaurants. Tune in next time to see one of the nation's top chefs such as George Perrier, Roberto Donna, Jose Garces, Michael Schlau, or Tony Clark as they share their culinary talents and unique creativity. Learn how to make the delectable dishes and hip creations they're serving in today's restaurants or impress your family with a culinary twist on tonight's dinner. Check our website for listings in your area or today's recipe.